G'day, I'm gonna make another video about me actually doing my job. I've got, um, I'm at a great place today that has some straightforward wind out windows and I'm gonna make some screens for. Uh, these are very, very popular windows, so hopefully you might find something in this video that uh, could help you out around your own home. Right, now an important part of what we do at on-site fly screens is use this, an extruded fly screen frame. You can see in the cross section here, it's basically one piece. Um, punched out of some magic machine, I don't know how it works, but uh, it makes a nice strong fly screen frame. This one is a standard uh, 25 by 11 mil frame, uh, and compared to say the roll form alternative, which is a flat piece of metal folded into the shape of a fly screen, uh, this one is far superior. The, um, the, the, the frame itself has a lot more strength to it, and so you can use the frame as its own spring, which can help you put it into, uh, into the window frame. That's so an excellent piece of work, as opposed to the, the roll form stuff that you might find at your average hardware store, uh, or often used in older houses. Now, a little known fact about fly screen frame is it's made with a slight outward bow. So I put it against the straight edge of my ute tray here, give it a bit of a rock. You can see that it's actually rocking a bit. The reason for that is because the whole thing works a bit like a spring to uh, push out and keep some tension on the mesh. But when you actually add it to the fly screen itself, you need to apply it so that that outward bow is still just visible. And here's a bit of a secret weapon in the fly screen business. Uh, as part of what we do, as this is part of our job, of course, we have specialized saws to make the fly screen frames, to cut the 45 degree corners. Um, the saw itself isn't anything special, but the blade is a specific aluminium blade, which makes life a lot easier, faster, more efficient for us to build them. Uh, it can be very difficult doing it yourself if you've got to use the old mitre box or something like that to cut those corners. Um, so by us coming to your house and actually doing it with a saw like this, um, can really make the job much more effective. Now it's assembly time and I'm opting for these plastic corners. Just the slot right in the end. Get that both ends. That's two ends. Now stick the sides in. And there you have it fly screen frame. Now for a bit of personal preference to actually secure the, the fly screen to the window frame, I personally opt for these, these little plastic D handles, which are popped just under the mesh up this end. And I, I opt for these over the plunger pins that often go through the sides. Doesn't really matter too much which way you go. They both more or less do the same job. Um, just this is a bit of personal preference for me. So your D-handle just locks into the little fly screen frame here. Now just for the sake of it, I'm gonna demonstrate an inward bow, um, the incorrect option. Now hopefully in this picture you can see the inward bow to this fly screen frame. An inward bow will mean your screens will rattle around, around loose in your window frames and they won't seal up very well down the edges either. Pay no attention to this tufter fly screen I've got poking up. I'm gonna make this bow outwards and that'll take up that extra little bit of fly screen I've got poking out there. Now hopefully, as my iPhone camera looks along the edge of the frame here, you can still actually see that very slight outward bow. It's not much, but it makes a big difference. It helps fill in the space of the window frame itself.
And just like this, we have a really good example of how a wind-out screen should work. You see the wind is set down there in, in the middle of the timber. And along here, we've got this timber beading running all the way to the top of the window. And the point of the timber beading is to support this. This is what we call a sill extension or sill adapter. Uh, and this goes along the bottom edge of the window frame and pushes back against that timber beading. Now to cut the sill extension, line it up all around, down the edges, over the winder, mark where you want to cut it. And using tin snips, put in the first nick. Doesn't hurt to cut seal extension into three or four sections. And break them off. At this 20 mil line across the back. Now be aware that this is a 19 millimeter shelf here and a 20 millimeter breakaway line. So there's usually some sort of light gap coming through where the uh, winder and the sill extension meet up. In this case, with this type of frame that we're using, the fly screen frame actually just clips in and sits here like that. Now my preferred method to fix this, the fly screen to the window frame is to take a little screw like this and add it to the top of the window frame right in front of that D-handle. Now to remove the fly screen, all you do is pull in the handle, pass the screw, and it's as simple as that. Now you can see down the long edge of the frame here, I'm going to move in. You can see here how the, the screen is actually pushing against the timber. That's because the outward bow that we talked about before is doing its job. So there you go, that's me actually doing my job, installing fly screens to wind out windows. A very uh, common type of window in Melbourne. So um, you notice those ones are actually brown. Uh, many of you in, out there in the suburbs especially will be painting over the brown and making things white, which is a really nice option in, uh, in some of those old 70s homes. In this case though, the brown works really well against the uh, stained timber surrounding. Now this is a, something I'm actually an expert in. This is something I'm, I'm actually good at. Uh, so you, when you hear, hear me actually talking about four wheel driving, look, I'm not a mechanic, so maybe you do want to get some professional advice there. But on fly screens, that's my thing.